I want to talk a little bit in depth about the ML King celebration. Dr. Martin Luther King was a, was very much a, a jazz enthusiast. He loved jazz. Um, he was uh, he addressed the Berlin Jazz Festival in 1964. And, and again, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But let's for now talk about the Unity Group. The Unity Group. Tell us a little bit about what the Unity Group is about uh, and how you got started with it and its mission in general. Basically, the Unity Group was started to try to get a black person appointed to a vacant position in the Chattanooga City Commission. They failed in that effort, but the energy that was created uh, compelled them to keep going. Hmm. And they did succeed a few years later in getting John Franklin elected as the first black person elected uh, to uh, city commission at that point. The basic uh, tenet of the unity group is to provide a voice for those who are not heard and to provide a forum for addressing community concerns and individual mm. issues through dialogue and due process methods. About the ML King birthday celebration, uh, it was started by a white minister, Reverend Leroy Griffin, and because they wanted to do something to to say that uh, Dr. King's memory should uh, be perpetuated uh, immediately after his death. And so that was the genesis of that. I, I wanted to talk about the impact of that because when I, when I got here to Chattanooga about 11 years ago, one of the first events that I went to was actually that particular march, and it was at the, from the Tivoli at that time. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, from ML King area to the Tivoli. And I thought that was just amazing to see all folks of color just get together to do this march. I know that we performed last year. Um, at Olivet Baptist Church. Because Olivet I Baptist. think that was the first year in m many years yeah. that it had been held at Olivet. But I think you all originally started at Olivet Baptist Church. We started in the west side with uh, oh. Leroy. Uh, Griffin, but out of it was our base uh, of operations. But what we did was we symbolically marched from the ghetto to the business like district. Like and that. so on the 50th anniversary year of Civil Rights Act, and we came back home to out of it. And for some reason, since that was in 64 and then 65, uh, well, we had I Have a Dream speech in 64. Uh, they passed the Civil Rights Act in, in 65. Hmm. And so this year we came back. But we probably will go back to the center of commerce in the future. Uh, and it has uh, evolved now into a full week's uh, programming. We touch on a lot of things. We have community forums. We have... Uh, this time we had the State of Black Chattanooga with uh, Dr. Ken Chilton, who came and told us about how to analyze the numbers of, uh, of the demographics and the data that, that's out there about us in African Americans, especially in this community. And I guess certainly to be able to, uh, I guess, achieve and live out your theme, Focus 2020, crisis in the community, where do we go from here? We have to learn how to use that data and those demographics to, to the benefit of the mission of the organization. Right. The data is good, but if you don't have a way of analyzing it and adapting it to your set of circumstances, it's just some numbers on a page. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, I, I want to get a little personal with you tonight, if I can. Will you allow me to? Just a little Call bit. Call my wife and ask. <laughs> <laughs> Can you remember what you were doing the moment that you found out about the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King? I can. This is a famous story in my life. People who know me know this story passionately. I was a student at Tennessee Preparatory School in Nashville, Tennessee, and I was coming into the building, and one of my dorm mates was running through the, through the hallway shouting, we got him, we got him, we got him. I said, what are you saying? We got that in. I said, really? What, who, who are you talking about? We killed that coon, Martin Luther Coon. And I hit him in the mouth. Oh. Knocked him up against the wall, grabbed him and threw him down. Put what we used to call a pikeville jack on him. I tore his butt up. 
And then as I was hitting him that last time, I thought about Dr. King would not want me acting like that. Mm. I picked him up and dusted him off and said, I'm sorry I hit you, but you shouldn't have said that. And he and I became, we were teammates anyway. And, but we became, we repaired our friendship after that. And so with that being such a prolific moment in the history of the world, in the history of everyone's life who experienced it, how did it impact you personally from that time forward? Well, I was already a, a, a child of the promise. I had gone to integrated schools in Chattanooga. I was socially accepted among all races of people. And I did not feel any particular pressure except that I knew about the injustice and the, and the wrongness of uh, racism and, and separatism. And so it really didn't affect, impact me directly like it did some people. But at the same time, I always knew that whatever I would do in life would be to treat people fair, you know, to try to uh, be merciful and love justice and walk close with God. That's what I wanted to do. And I don't think I could do that being racist or separatist, no matter what color I would have been. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I just want to thank you all for the opportunity to come out and say something. And as I close out, I'd just like to mm -hmm. share because our, our theme talks about where do we go from here? Mm. Martin Luther King wrote a book, says, where do we go from here? Chaos or community. And in that he says, we're now faced with the fact that tomorrow is today. Mm. We're confronted with the fierce urgency of now. In this unfolding conundrum of life and history, there is such a thing as being too late. Procrastination is still the thief of time. Life often leaves us standing bare, naked and dejected with lost opportunity. This may well be mankind's last chance to choose between chaos or opportunity. Mm. Chattanooga, where are we going to go from here? Mm. Thank you so much, Winston Coleman. Chani, you're listening to The Jazz Experience tonight, January 18th, on the M.L. King Holiday Weekend.